So, good morning. Pashat uh, Chayes Um I'd like to speak a little bit about uh, comfort. Um, you know, there's a great concept that Rav Tzadok HaKohen said. Uh, Rav Tzadok HaKohen was a leading um, Hasidic thinker who, uh, who lived in the beginning of the 20th century. And he laid down a principle of interpretation in the Torah. And he said, whenever we want to understand the concept in the Torah, what we have to do is we have to see where this word or where this concept first appears in the Torah. And from that context, we'll be able to understand um, a little bit about the essence of that concept. So at the end of Pashat Chayei Sarah, it speaks about um, that uh, Rivka came and she met Yitzchak. And I'll read to you the verse. It says that um, that Yitzchak brought her, Rivka, into his mother Sarah's tent. He took Rivka and she became his wife and he loved her. And then the Pasuk ends, And Yitzchak was comforted for his mother. In other words, after he was, uh, he was very attached to his mother, and after she passed away, he was, um, he was in much pain. And, but after he married Rivka and he took her into the tent, so he was comforted. What's the connection between bringing her into the tent and comfort. Rashi over here quotes a Midrash that what he saw in Rivka was he saw that she brought about the same type of phenomena as his mother. While his mother was alive, there were three features about her tent. Number one, that there was a lamp that always was lit from one Shabbat to the other Shabbat. In other words, she would light a lamp on Erev Shabbat and it would, light, it would last to the next Shabbat that there was blessing in the dough, in the challah that she made, and that there was uh, a cloud of glory, some uh, cloud of the Shekhinah, the divine presence, which always hovered over her, t- or over her tent. And when Yitzchak married Rivka and he brought her into the tent of Sarah, so then these three phenomena returned, and that's why he was comforted. So we learned from this that what is the essence of comforting? The essence of comforting is, is that what we try to do is, is to restore what a person lost. In this case, it was restorable. If we can't restore, Yitzchak couldn't restore um, Sarah's life to, to himself. Sarah's gone, she's passed on to another world. But what can be restored is the legacy of Sarah. What Sarah did, and the type of home that she created, that could be restored. And that's why the the Torah uses the word comforting. To comfort, the first level of comforting is is to restore what a person lost. But actually, I wanted to add on that this is is one of the issues of comforting, one of the features of comforting. But actually, there's three which I wanted to share with you. The one which I just have said, restoration. Uh, the first basic one is even beforehand is identification. The halakha is that let's say a person has a relative, loses a relative, someone who's a beloved. We go to the shiva house. The halakha is that we go to the shiva house. We don't have to say anything. In fact, the halakha is is that we shouldn't talk in a shiva house until we are addressed first by the mourners themselves. So uh, today, I don't know, there's a uh, lot of discussion, why don't we keep this halakha? But, uh, but that's how it is. The, the basic halakha is that one's not spoken to in a house of mourning, one doesn't initiate, sorry, a conversation unless the mourners uh, speak to us first. So we see that the essence then of, of, uh, of coming to visit the mourners is not that one that says anything to them, it's just an identification and empathy with a person's sorrow. The second one is that we spoke about now is restoration. And the third one is uh, about comforting is, is that we try to say words of, uh, which are meaningful to the mourner, to somehow um, bring a sense of, of rationality, to make things, the loss, something which is more understandable, or more that a person can relate to. And I remember that... Um, like when there was the expulsion from Gush Katif, 
Um, so there was like a, one of these iconic photographs uh, before the bulldozers uh, bashed down the, the homes of the, the Mitjashvim. So someone on, his, uh, on the wall of his house, he put a massive, drew a massive spray, painted a massive a question mark with one word, Lama. That means why. Part of the pain of loss is why. Why did this have to, ha have to happen? And if we can say words which are meaningful, then we are able to comfort. We all know the classical case of, uh, I just want to bring like, one example into this to, uh, to finish this message. Um, we all know that Professor Oman, um, the Nobel Prize winner, he lost a son in the Lebanese war. And um, when one of the Rosh Hashivas, Rav Guzman, came to uh, comfort him, um, he was very obviously very cut up because of this, uh, this terrible tragedy. And Rav Guzman said to Professor Oman, he says, you know what, um, I was fleeing the Nazis in the 1940s and my son was gunned down but before my eyes through the Germans. And at least your son, what he did was, he died defending uh, the land of Israel. He died in a tank and that was a different type of Kiddush Hashem. And Professor Oman said that comforted him. So we try to find words, words which reach a person's heart, words which make sense. We don't have to speak in a bombastic way, but to say words that in some way would bring a sense of comfort. So in summary, what we learned from this issue of that the Torah uses for the first time in the context of Yitzchak married Sarah, this is, uh, Yitzchak marrying Rivka, and that he was comforted after his mother. And the context in which comfort is used is restoration. But we added on that there are three um, other aspects of comfort, and that is number one, to empathize, and number the third one is that we say words which are meaningful, and that way we assuage and we make it, uh, we soften a person's sense of loss.